on today's Technobabble, shooting against open windows. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Hi, everyone, and welcome again to another episode of Tech No Babble. My name is, of course, Paul Allen Clifford, and I'm your host, and I'd love for you to join the conversation. So you'll see in my lower third, if you're watching the video, the web address I'd love you to go to. That's trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact. There you can leave a message, question, comment, whatever you would like, or I've got all my contact information there. So that's all you need to remember if you can't remember my email address, which is paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com, or um, my Twitter handle, Paul Allen Cliff, P A U L A L A N C L I F, or uh, you can also give me a call on the voicemail line, 1 763 3246. That's 1 Pod Echo, where you can echo back to this podcast. One more thing, and then we'll get going, and that is. Um, the churchtechcast.com network is generously provided for by viewers like you. Thank you. Head on over to patreon.com slash paulallencliff. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-a-u-l-a-l-a-n-c-l-i-f. And you can support the show for as little as a dollar a month or as much as a hundred. It's really up to you. Every, bit you. every little bit helps. So thank you for your support. So, again, I was listening to a podcast, and someone was talking about setting up a video studio with windows in the background, and I thought, well, first off, let me be clear that I'm talking about the things that are glass that cover holes in your wall. Yeah, windows. Not Microsoft Windows, windows. So this isn't a Mac versus PC kind of thing. This is those things that enable you to see through walls. That's what I was talking about. Anyway, he was talking about that, and he said, man, that's beautiful. But the problem is, it's not beautiful because he doesn't have the shot set up correctly. You see, the problem is, indoor light isn't as bright as the sun, which makes perfect sense because uh, none of your indoor light is created by uh, nuclear fusion of helium molecules or hydrogen molecules into helium that just isn't how we light things and even if it did if it was it would be very very hot and you thought tungsten lights were hot hot so it's not the case that indoor lighting is generally speaking as bright as the sun but there's also another issue and that is color temperature when you shoot your camera with it balanced, white balanced, for indoor lights, typically it's going to think of more orange light as white. So as a result, the outdoor is going to be like a blue, bluish green kind of color, and that's no good either. So you've got really two problems. You've got a lot of brightness from the window, and you've got the wrong color of light coming in through the window. Now, of course, you can do outdoor color temperature balance lights, but that doesn't mess with the brightness. So you might be thinking, well, Paul, you're not telling me the truth. What are you, what are you saying that um, it, it messes with uh, your camera? I can look out the window while I'm looking at someone sitting in front of the window, and it looks perfectly fine to me. That's true. But let me show you what it looks like through my secondary webcam. This is my eyesight on my MacBook Pro. And I'm just going to turn over here and cut to that shot. So if you're looking at it through here, you'll see that right behind my head, there's this big white thing. That is the window. And 
this big white thing, if you were sitting where this uh, laptop is, I had to rearrange my whole office to make this happen. So if you were sitting here, you would be able to see the tree outside. You'd be able to see the neighbor's house. It's a much better view than what you can see through this camera. And that is because webcams especially, but all cameras right now have a problem where they can't see the range of light that our eyes can. So that's why there's this thing called high dynamic range photography that mimics what your eye can see. But you can't really do that in video unless you do some little cheats. So I wanted to talk real quick about what would happen if you were to um, cheat so that you can get this window behind you um, a little bit better. Here, I'm going to go play with the settings over here. I've got the webcam settings, and I'm going to switch to manual so that I can start to get this big window, which is behind me. I'm looking at my monitor over here. Uh, so that I can start to get that correct. So I'm in manual, or I'm in auto. Let's go to manual. Okay, that's darker. You can start to make out some detail. Let's shut that down just a little bit. See what this does. Yeah, you'll see that you're starting to get some detail in the window behind me. This other white light, by the way, that's a soft box, so you're actually starting to get some detail there, too. I need to do some work on it. But, you see, when you finally get some detail out of that window, it's still bright, but I look like I'm in a witness relocation uh, kind of situation here. Let me change. Yep. So, you see the I've changed the white balance, and you can see that the color back here looks a little bit more natural, but I look way too warm in here. And this is still dark. Um, let's actually see if I change the gamma. Okay, now you can actually see some leaves back there. So that's really not ideal. Let me switch this back to the regular settings and we'll go back to the, um, the camera that I have set up for this. So let's do that and let me turn. Okay, that's better. So you can see that while that's a web camera and it's not as good as maybe a DSLR or another camera that's more purpose built, you're still you still have an issue with um, with what you're you're trying to accomplish. And my shot isn't even as good as I like normally because um, I've got that window open and normally I've I've got it closed down. So maybe let's go through some tips for shooting against windows. The number one tip, the easiest one, is don't shoot against a window. Just move. You can use some of that light uh, to help your shot, to help your lighting, if it's coming from the side, if it's coming from maybe more the front. But if it's behind the subject, you're going to have some problems. So the easiest thing to do is move so that the window is not behind the subject. Now that's all not always practical and sometimes the person will say, no, no, I really want that window in there. In which case it gets more difficult, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. So let's talk about some other things that you can do. You can, if you've got blinds or curtains, you can uh, shut those. 
that still might not be as preferable, but it would be better. Now you can also start using gel. Now if you're a lighting person, you know what gel is. I don't think I've got any within arm's reach, but gel is a kind of a plastic substance that's translucent in different colors. And what you may not know if you're not into video is that gel, they make three types of gel that are really great for this particular application. One is called neutral density or ND, neutral density. Think of this as like tinting for tinted windows or sunglasses. Neutral density gel, what that means is that it doesn't, um, you might have noticed that some car windows, they can be like purple in how they're tinted. Neutral density is even across the color spectrum, so it just lowers the amount of light that it allows through. So you could cover the window in neutral density gel to deal with the brightness. And depending on the time of day, you're, you might need a very, um, very dark neutral density gel, or you might need just a little neutral density gel. But the idea, because it comes in all sorts of, uh, an array of brightness and contrast, well, not brightness and contrast, but you know what I mean, color uh, transmission, light transmission abilities. So perhaps you need a very dark neutral density gel, or perhaps you don't, or maybe you need something in the middle. So if you're going to do a lot of these shots, since you don't know from time to time how the light is going to be, the sun is somewhat predictable, but not completely predictable. An overcast day is going to give you something totally different than a rainy day, which is going to give you something totally different than uh, sunrise, than sunset, than noon. And depending on where the window is in the building, you're going to get different things as well. So, what you would ideally need is each possible neutral density gel in your kit large enough to cover the entire window or cover enough of the window that the that it kind of lowers the amount of light being transmitted through. But that doesn't solve all the problem. The other problem is that you have two different colors of light. You've got the sun which is a totally different color temperature than your lighting. So you need to change one or the other. Since we're not outside, where changing the color of the sun would be virtually impossible, although you can do it with a large piece of gel held between the sun and the subject, that's possible, just not recommended. It's just a window size piece of gel that we need. There are two color correction types of gel that you can get. CTB, color temperature blue or correct to blue, and CTO, color temperature orange or correct to orange. I've heard it called both. And what that means is you take the CTO and you put it over your window and it would make it the same color temperature as what your lights are going to be, what incandescent lights or uh, those types of warmer lights are. So that solves that problem. Another way to do it though is if you had a lot of light on the inside, you use a whole lot of light to balance out the amount of light that's coming in through the window and then you use a CTB gel on all the lights correct to blue or color temperature blue to make all the light that you're using indoors match the color temperature of the light that's outdoors. So that's another way to do that. 
unfortunately, these are all not cheap ways to do this. And this is a church video, so that kind of poses a problem because a lot of us just don't have the budget for every potential type of um, every potential type of gel that you could need or a lot of lights in a light kit. So what are some other things that you can do? First off, you can expose for the subject, not for the window. So just say, I'm going to try and draw people's attention with good composition to the subject and not to the background. Again, this is getting on my nerves that I've got all this light coming in from this window and I'm not as exposed as I normally am. So that's one thing that you can do. Um, you can also make sure that you shoot your shot where the subject is not in contact with the window. What do I mean by that? Say they want the window in the shot if you can separate the subject from the window just a little bit, it's going to make it a lot easier to replace the window in post. So what I would recommend is you expose properly for the subject with the camera locked down on the tripod, not moving the entire time. Then when the subject leaves, still with the camera locked down, not moving the entire time, expose for the window and shoot roughly about the same amount of time as you had for the interview with the subject or the subject talking. Let's say this is your pastor. Your pastor has a beautiful window uh, just off to one side. You move the pastor just to the side of the window where maybe there's part of the window in the shot but so that it can still be seen but not a lot. Expose for the pastor. Shoot the pastor move the pastor out of the way, and then expose for the window. And then in post, in After Effects, or a lot of uh, editors can do this, you'll just cut out, you'll put one layer on top of the other, and then you will cut out the overexposed window and let the correctly exposed window shine through. So that's another way to do it. Now. If you're okay with being uh, overexposing the window so that the subject looks right, there are situations where you would want to do what I showed you just a few minutes ago where you expose the window properly and you underexpose the subject. Uh, let's say you're trying to go for a witness protection kind of feel. That works perfectly fine. If you're trying to go for a silhouette, that would work perfectly fine. Any of those situations you can do. But realize that if you try and expose the window fairly close and you try and expose the subject fairly close, the subject's going to be too dark still and the window's going to be too bright still. And that's not so much good. So you really have to make a decision if you want your video to have the impact that it can. And the reason that we do this is we want to remove distractions. We don't want people saying, huh, must have been really bright out that day. If they're thinking that thought, they're not listening. So that's no good. We don't want to um, make the subject too dim because unless it's clear that that's what you meant to do, the people will be thinking, huh, they should have turned on some lights or something. And of course you did have on lights, it's just the sun is much brighter. So this is an entire exercise in making up for the shortcomings of the camera. Now sometimes we use those shortcomings to our advantage as in when you have a white background and your um, putting the person in front of it so that it looks like they're in a perfectly white room when in fact they're not, that's using the camera's shortcomings to your advantage. You can do the same thing with a black background. Is 
you can just expose the subject enough that the background there's no detail there. That's using the shortcomings of the camera to your advantage, but in this case we've got to overcome those shortcomings and that's what you want to do if you're going to remove distractions on your path to changing eternity. Real quick before I go, feel free to subscribe to this video and uh, share it with the friends. If you have people that you know that would like this content, please share it with them. I would love it if we could kind of, as a community, share this with the most number of people because that's how we'll change more lives and eternities. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with Trinity Digital Media dot com.